as a real estate agent, you're considered an independent contractor, which means for tax purposes, you're responsible for keeping track of all of your expenses and income that you have and that occurs inside your business as a real estate agent. So that means you need to track your gross commission income, your marketing expenses, your desk fees, your automobile expenses, all of those things so that you can accurately record essentially how much money you made at the end of the year and so that you can pay taxes on that at the end of the year. So we've designed this spreadsheet for real estate agents. It's built specifically and more geared towards solo real estate agents, uh, real estate agents who are kind of just getting started in their real estate agent career and real estate agents who have kind of simple number of transactions. So it might not be ideal for somebody who's looking to build a real estate team or has a real estate team or any of those sorts of things just because they may have larger production numbers, but also because they may need more insights into their financial data. So for those people, uh, we generally just recommend that you move to an accounting software or, or bookkeeping program like QuickBooks or Zero or something like that. But this spreadsheet is great for newer real estate agents. And we're just going to kind of run through briefly how it's set up and how to use it properly uh, to see what kind of an expense spreadsheet if you're trying to go your own, make your own, uh, what you should include, uh, or if you're just looking to uh, get connected with something like this, uh, we, we can certainly show you what our spreadsheet has to offer. So this is the setup tab. Here you're basically gonna enter all of your categories for your income categories. Now these are customizable, so you could write anything that you want. We've already pre-filled these based on some of the common categories that we see and also some of the common categories that are la laid out in the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book by Gary Keller. Uh, so these are these are some of the income categories that you're gonna wanna track, and we've put some of the most common expense categories in here as well. And when you do that, but you could uh, customize these. Let's say you wanna add some uh, specific category here. We'll just say marketing. We have lead generation already included up here, but just for purposes, we're just gonna show you what what it does so here we're going to select one among one of these categories for tax purposes that we think it most closely aligns with and for this we're going to say advertising so we have our marketing and advertising we have our marketing expense account and we have our advertising so where these show up is in our marketing account we're going to use this as an expense category under an expense tracker and this advertising tab is going to actually feed into a tax tab that we'll show you as we advance along these different tabs. So, so for now, I'll just go ahead and delete that. But that's what we have in terms of the income or the income and then the expense categories as well as our tax categories. Here we have our monthly profit targets. You can set what you want your monthly tar uh, profit target to be, what you're hoping to achieve. And it's going to run a total for you already so you can kind of get an idea of kind of your profit targets this profit target will show up on your annual dashboard and it just gives you a comparison to see how you're doing compared to your plan or your goal uh, it's not necessary to fill out something like this or have the data it's just always nice to see as you're going along to track how close you are to your goals that you set as you're moving throughout the year so here's our expense tab total, or our, yeah, our expense tab tracker. This is going to total up the amount of expenses that you've spent. It's very critical. The way that we've set up our tab, uh, the spreadsheet and tab, is we have our date, we have our expense category, and then we have our amount, which is going to automatically, based on the uh, section that we're picking, it's automatically going to feed into our tax category. So you don't even need to do anything in there. And that's going to feed into our tax tab uh, when we get to the end here. So as you can see, when I clicked on it, we had our commission that changed and it automatically filled out our commission and fees that you can see. So let's say we paid 1500 to our broker. As you can see, we increased our total expenses. We have our commission paid out and then we had our 1500 expense there. We need to make sure that we add a date. So the date can be whatever you want. 
as long as it's within the calendar year that you're tracking or within the year that you're tracking from when you set up this. So if you decided to push your start date later, uh, you could certainly do that. Just make sure that your all of your dates fall within this tab. Generally, we recommend creating an expense every single year just so that it aligns with the calendar year. But if for some reason you're running on a different fiscal year, like for tax purposes, then you could definitely change your date here in the starting month. So we filled out the expense tracker, uh, one, one column for the expense tracker. And you can write references if you if you wish. You know, maybe let's say you have checks that you use and so you use a check number that's 1530 or something like that and you want to write the description you can certainly do that and any additional information that you might want to add to the expense just to give you an idea of where the expense came from or what it was for and just any more additional information that you need to do to cover so the expense tracker works or the income tracker works very very similar to the expense tracker it's kind of the same idea you simply answer the date we enter the side of income, so whether if we do sales income versus our listing income. Sales income generally represents the buy side when we're working with buyers. Listing income represents when we're working with sellers. And you just enter the amount. Let's say we just want to change it. And again, it keeps a total tally up here. Now, there are two things. If you're using something like this that isn't that would be would put into question depending on what kind of insights you want into your information for your broker generally we recommend you actually list out the gci here so the total gross commission income so let's say you sell a home that's one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and your commission is three percent and so your total total gci is four thousand five hundred dollars for that transaction and then what we recommend instead would be for like your commissions paid out to your broker is that you're going to do the 150,000 times your commission and then let's say at your commission split at 20%. So you pay your broker 900, which is the total cost paid out to your broker. The reason we recommend this is so that when you get to your annual dashboard, you can get an idea of how much was basically paid out to your broker, which I'll just run through, run too briefly without getting into too much detail. But here we have the amount that we paid out to our broker. And if we scroll all the way over, we can see the percentage of revenue is 11.25%. So that gives us an idea of how much maybe like our commission split or how much we're actually paying to our broker so that we can get a good idea of if somebody's offering us better commission splits or like a, or if there's a different company that has a cap or any of those things, we can sort of get a better idea and insight into what is actually being paid to our broker. So now keep in mind the total net income then in this case, the income that's going to be on this sheet isn't going to be representative of what's going to be on the 1099 that you receive from your broker. So it's important just to explain that, like if you're sending this over to your accountant when you're doing uh, tax, when it comes to tax accounting time, that you're just explaining this and that they're aware of it. The other tab that we've included in our expense tracker is an auto deduction. All you simply have to do is you're driving around, you just enter your uh, odometer start reading time, your odometer end reading time. It'll automatically calculate your miles and it'll automatically sum up your total deductions uh, for mileage. This assumes the standard tax rate at, uh, you know, 65 and a half cents. And it's just going to take your uh, standard deduction rather than itemizing it. If you plan to itemize your deductions, you know, again, talk with your tax accountant to see what works out for you and how to properly structure it so that you're figuring out whether you should itemize or standardize. As a result, in our own expense tracker spreadsheet, we didn't really automatically feed our mileage. So if you did want to include your mileage at the end of the year or every month, you would have to take the monthly totals and so let's say 12 31 23 towards the end of the year and we want to record our auto expenses to get a better true picture of our income and expenses we're going to do that and because we're taking the standard deduction then that'll feed into our taxes account now in this case so so if you are because we set it up basically because we don't know how you're going to keep track most people take the standard deduction but it doesn't necessarily always make sense for everybody so just make sure that you're not recording auto expenses 
in the standard as well as in uh, in the expense tra in the expense tracker. You don't want to make sure you just want to make sure that you're not double counting by including expenses uh, for your automobile like gas or fuel in this as well. Uh, and also take the standard deduction because then you'll be you'll be double counting. So if if you have any doubts, just you know again consult with your CPA to get an idea for that. The other tab that we have is our annual dashboard that we spoke about, and this gives you insights into how you're performing throughout the year. We have our profit target that we set up, our total profit for the year so far, and then we have our income and total expenses. So it just gives you a good idea to see how you're doing in relation to your profit target. Here we have an expense breakdown by category if you wanted to see what percentage of expenses you're spending. So 50% of our expenses that we're spending money is on our uh, looks like commissions paid out to broker in this scenario. The next highest cost is our, looks like our auto expenses, followed by, what do we got? Our, you know, NAR dues, our membership dues to the MLS. So, and then if you want to see an expense to income breakdown, kind of gives you an idea of your cash flow situation on a monthly basis. Um, by cash flow, we mean the money that's left over after money going out and money coming in. So we had this amount of money come in, which is 4,500. We had $500 come out. So we know that we had, you know, a month of $4,000 of extra money or capital that came in. And then in, you know, February, we had negative balance. We had $75 go out. So here is a breakdown of your commission income or your income accounts if you wanted to see those just to see what months. It just kind of gives you an idea. This data is a little bit harder to look at, so usually we don't recommend spending too much time looking at it. You know, usually it's much better to just kind of see here with these green bars how that's comparing. And probably the more important count here, uh, account or part of the annual dashboard is our expense account if you want to analyze that. Here we can move over to the percentage of revenue. And that gives us an idea on how to benchmark some of this stuff to know when we're spending too high or too little. Like we know that based on our commission, the total of these accounts should equal about 30% based on industry best practices. Well, our broker transaction fees commission, all of that should equal about 30%. And then the rest of our expenses should also equal about 30% as well. For newer agents, we expect this to be about 30 uh like the broker splits to be somewhere between 20 and 30 percent just because that's what's most common for newer agents that are starting out and we expect the costs for uh expenses for marketing to be a little bit higher so we generally expect somewhere between 30 and 40 percent in that account as well so that that leaves like agents making about a net profit of around 30 percent or so somewhere between their uh, in terms of their income. So if they're doing 100,000 in GCI, we would expect that they would make somewhere around 30,000 to 40,000, $40,000. That's what we like to see. And that's usually what we expect. And so here's the tax tracker. Again, all this data was pulled in automatically. So we have um, our truck account here. Uh, and so you can see that we have uh, the, the account being pulled in for 532.75, and that is based on what information that we recorded here in our auto expenses here. So you see here, if you could say this was a double accounting, let's say we added $500 of expenses to our auto because we were tracking it along, let's say that's our insurance payment, but then we also included our standard mileage, we would be double counting in that case, and that's not what we want to do. We want to make sure that we're not double counting. And so in the case with here in our taxes, we would go back and it would be our standard deduction again. So all of these accounts, what's important to realize is I didn't make these up. These weren't made up in our tax tracker. The reason we spe specifically picked these accounts, they align with accounts that are listed on your Schedule C, which is usually the standard uh, form that you're going to be filing uh, as an LLC or a sole proprietor in the real estate business is you're going to be following a Schedule C. So this tax tracker makes it extremely uh, more convenient and efficient for your uh, tax accountant when it comes tax time or if you're filling it out yourself. And then the last tab that we've included in our expense tracker is a recurring tracker. This is optional. It's a totally optional tab and does not feed into any of the expenses. So if you have 
monthly expenses, you'll have to make sure to include them on the expense tracker sheet. But the reason we created this is to give you an insight into how much you might be spending every single month on various categories. And so you'll fill out your categories here. There's only spots for however many that is there, 10. And then you'll select the category that you want to do. You can select the date and then you'll just select the monthly price. It's important that you have the monthly price for it rather than quarterly or whatever else it might be. Just boil it down to the monthly. We calculate it into an annual just, just so you can see and you're aware. And then you can see that it reflected over here in the reoccurring overview because then we sum up the total subscriptions of what you're paying every single month. And it just kind of gives you an insight into areas where you have these reoccurring fees that you may want to look at if you can switch them over to a variable expense. And by variable, we mean like they're associated with only a transaction or an event that occurs. So like we would rather see, let's say we're paying desk fees. We would rather see desk fees uh, and we would rather, we would, instead of seeing a desk fee, it would be better to have a transaction fee. So we would rather have a zero desk fee because these uh, represent expenses that essentially are going to come out of your account and your paycheck or your bank account, and you're going to be billed for them regardless of whether or not you're completing a transaction. So you certainly want to try to lower these when you're starting out. And this gives you insight into what you're kind of committed to, to having to pay on a regular monthly basis. It just gives you a good idea to make sure that you're planning and budgeting properly in your real estate career. So that's the gist of uh, our real estate expense spreadsheet, you're totally welcome to, you know, you can definitely design something like this yourself. Uh, alternatively, you can access the spreadsheet if you would like to from our uh, company and get started right away. You know, it's a much more convenient option than QuickBooks because you'd have to, you know, there one, there's the learning curve for QuickBooks and two, you know, there is the regular monthly payment that you would have in your subscription here on your subscription account for uh, QuickBooks that could range anywhere from 15 to uh, 40, $60 a month, depending on the platform and plan that you're picking. And for real estate agents who are just starting out or doing a low number of transactions and have simple finances, uh, uh, program or an accounting solution like QuickBooks can sometimes be overkill. So again, to access the spreadsheet, just re look in the comments below and you can definitely get the spreadsheet.